the information contained in this video is intended for people undergoing hyperbaric oxygen therapy, the Life Eugene Marie Hyperbaric Unit. Uh, the information contained should not be considered uh, medical uh, information for anyone other than my own patients. But you are welcome to take the information from this video and to discuss it with your, your medical team looking after you at your hyperbaric facility. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is very safe and has been used for a number of years with minimal incidence, but it is important that patients be aware of the potential side effects and potential complications associated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Because of this, I will try and give a short summary of some of these um, risks and side effects so that you are aware of these and so that we can ensure your safety as well as our own. Probably the most important potential risk associated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy is the potential risk of a fire. 100% oxygen at increased pressure, which usually exceeds two atmospheres absolute, with a small spark can potentially contribute to a risk of fire. Obviously, we want to make sure that your safety and our safety is assured. And the best way to do that is full communication with um, the patient as well as the personnel so that we can make sure that things um, go according to plan. Basic things like ensuring that you have the, the uh, appropriate clothing as given to you by your team containing 100% cotton, 100% uh, cotton underwear, avoiding hairspray and oils and other potentially uh, dangerous substances as well as making sure that you don't have your electronic equipment with you when you enter into the monoplace chamber is very important. Some of the measures that we take from our site to assure that your safety is to have our equipment um, assessed frequently by qualified engineers to make sure that we are safe. We also apply uh, a strap around your arm to to conduct static electricity away from you so that there is um, no risk of, of static um, electricity sparks inside the chamber. If at any point in time you realize that you forgot some form of electronic equipment on your body, please bring it to the attention of the personnel immediately. Your safety is our primary concern. From a medical perspective, probably one of the most common effects that patients experience during their first treatment is the pressure changes on their ears. Effectively, the increase in the pressure on your outer ear drum um, is caused by the increase of pressure inside the chamber. This is often perceived as um, pressure. And some people feel as if their ears um, or their hearing has decreased um, with a sudden onset. And it's the same effect as you would experience when all of the cars doors close at exactly the same time or the, the type of pressure you would experience on your ears when an aircraft is descending to, to land at an airport. The best way to compensate for the, these pressure changes is referred to as equalization of your middle ear pressure. This can be done by protruding your jaw slightly and yawning at the same time. While doing this, you might experience a clicking sensation of your ears, which is a good indication of the fact that you should be able to compensate for the pressure changes inside the chamber. If at any point in time you feel that this is not effective enough, you can apply gentle pressure onto your nose with a closed mouth while um, applying a small amount of pressure, more or less the same as you would do when you blow your nose gently, and this should also equal, equalize the pressure. If you do this, both of your ears and the pressure in your middle ear should equalize and have the effect of, of restoring the, the pressure on your eardrum to normal values. This should be done repeatedly during the initial phase of the treatment while the pressure um, and the ambient pressure inside the chamber increases. Very few patients, probably less than 2% of our patients, battle with this to the extent that we need to either stop treatment or delay treatment for them to have adequate assessment of the ears, 
in the the exception is that patients end up with um, grommets, which are little tubes placed inside the eardrum to allow, allow flow in and out of the middle ear space and to prevent damage. Please communicate with the hyperbaric chamber operator or with the medical practitioner involved with your treatment so that we can ensure the safety of your ears. The last thing we want is permanent damage to your eardrums because of the fact that you were not able to e equalize your ear pressure. Oxygen toxicity is something that we very rarely see within the context of hyperbaric oxygen therapy because of the fact that we follow very specific protocols to ensure the safety of patients. But the amount of oxygen that you have flowing through your body is potentially dangerous because of the fact that we reach pharmacological doses of oxygen in your bloodstream. This can contribute to potential risks as far as very sensitive structures are concerned. And none of these structures are as sensitive as your brain and your lungs. Oxygen toxicity of your brain can contribute to a potentially increased risk of patients with a past history of epilepsy or previous convulsions, experiencing convulsions while they're busy with the treatment. If you are on your appropriate medication, it's highly unlikely that you will experience any form of, of uh, neurological events during your treatment. But if you do notice some changes um, that could indicate that you are at risk of having convulsions, bring it to the attention of the team. Some effects that you might experience might be some twitchy sensation of the facial muscles or changes as far as um, a, a so-called aura that you might experience prior to um, convulsions. If you become aware of any of these symptoms, please bring it to our attention. Oxygen toxicity of the lungs occurs more frequently in patients with asthma, but it can occur in patients who do not have any past history of asthma and can sometimes be experienced in patients with a history of smoking. If you do experience a shortness of breath associated with multiple previous treatments in the hyperbaric chamber, please bring it to our attention so that we can assess you for this. What usually happens is we just omit a few treatments, give you a, a, the opportunity to recover completely, and then we can resume the treatment after that. It doesn't mean that we're going to exclude you from further treatment, so please communicate with us. One of the side effects that can be experienced by all patients who come for hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a drop in blood glucose levels. We refer to this in extreme cases as hypoglycemia. Diabetics are very prone to this because of the fact that they might have taken their medication on the morning of the treatment, or they might even have taken insulin. Um, if they did not have appropriate dietary intake of glucose in the form of a meal, they could have a drop in blood glucose levels inside the chamber. Our own research has demonstrated that um, the average patient has a 1.5 to 2 millimoles per liter drop in their blood sugar while they're inside the chamber. This is a reflection of the increased metabolic activity throughout your body, but can potentially be dangerous. We encourage everyone to have meals before they come for treatment. Inside the chamber, you will um, be given some sweets or candy and this is for the advantage of trying to increase your blood glucose levels while you're inside the chamber. Obviously, diabetic patients should refrain from eating all of our candy uh, unless they do experience the, the typical symptoms that they should be aware of prior to the commencement of treatment. Energy level fluctuations could occur, especially in elderly patients where uh, many patients experience severe fatigue after hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This could potentially be related to a drop in both blood glucose levels, and if there's any doubt, uh, a cup of tea or coffee with a, a small amount of sugar could increase your levels. Um, don't hesitate to contact us or to ask us for support. We are able to assess your glucose levels at the unit, so, so don't hesitate. Uh, many patients um, and especially elder patients sometimes experience um, a severe fatigue after the procedure. This is often associated with a, a history of smoking and the fact that patients are not used to high levels of oxygen. 
younger patients, however, could experience um, a, a degree of hyperactivity after the treatment and uh, uh, the patients should be aware of this. Do not involve yourself with any physical or strenuous activity afterwards um, that uh, your body would not allow, especially if you are recovering from a, a medical problem. As far as eyesight is concerned, it's important to take note of the fact that patients over the age of 50 could experience a change as far as their visual acuity is concerned after and during a hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This is often as ascribed to the pressure changes on the lens inside the eye, which can contribute to a change as far as your ability to focus especially on very small writing after the procedure or after the, the uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, on a more serious note, um, long-term effects associated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy could be the accelerated uh, pacification of your lenses associated with the pressure changes, especially in patients who have a genetic or familial predisposition to cataracts. To translate that into English, if you have a family history of cataracts, it is likely that your hyperbaric oxygen therapy could accelerate the rate of changes as far as your eyes are concerned. Take note of this, uh, mention it to your optometrist or ophthalmologist when you see them again to just ensure that there haven't been any changes uh, during the treatment. As far as other neurological effects are concerned, some patients could experience um, paresthesia which is abnormal sensation of their hands and their feet during the treatment. If you've had recent surgery, it is also possible that the surgical site might be more sensitized during the treatment because of the increased activity of oxygen on the nerves in the area where the operation was done. Because of the relatively small environment that patients experience during hyperbaric oxygen therapy in a monoplace chamber, some patients do experience claustrophobia. If you haven't had problems with claustrophobia before, for instance, while you inside uh, an elevator or a lift, um, it's unlikely that you'll experience any form of claustrophobia while you with us. Our chambers have acrylic linings, which means that it's possible to see what is going out on outside of the chamber and this is significantly better than being in a very closed environment. Uh, what one can do to try and avoid claustrophobia is to try and keep your eyes closed when you enter into the chamber and when you feel that your breathing um, returns back to normal to then open your eyes. You're more than welcome to um, uh, keep your eyes closed for the duration of the treatment we are able to communicate with you during the treatment so you don't have to be scared that you might fall asleep. If you do fall asleep, you'll have a, a very nice, quiet, relaxed environment to sleep in. Uh, and we will make sure that we wake you up afterwards when we prepare for landing. Some patients experience other side effects that are not necessarily listed here. If at any point in time you are concerned that you might be experiencing side effects, or uncommon side effects, please bring it to, to the attention of our team. Um, we will determine whether these side effects are in fact associated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy or not. Um, the most important thing is your safety. Your safety is our primary concern. If at any point in time there's anything that is of concern to you, please bring it to our attention so that we can address these issues immediately. Communication is key and your safety is our primary concern. Thank you very much.